Welcome in to K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. Another week gone by and uh, time to update some of the recruiting news and everything else going on in that world. So we've got our, our man Drew Galloway here, who I refer to as just our guru of recruiting. You ask him something, he knows who this guy is. He knows what they're doing. He probably knows what they had for breakfast, lunch, and their afternoon snack. Not dinner, though. He's not that invasive. So he, he lets them keep some things private. Uh, but if you want to know about K-State football recruiting, the best guy to go to is Drew. So let's uh, let's dive into it. Number one, we talked about it earlier in the week. K-State got a commitment this week. They got their quarterback in Dylan Duff for the 2025 class. So that was exciting news. Now that the the first guy has come in, are the floodgates going to burst open? Like, are we going to, over the course of the next month, see three, four commits? Or how far away are we from K-State starting to get a constant flow of these things. I'm not sure that the floodgates will be open this early, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a really big spring for K-State because it, it's crazy when you think about it, but like it just takes one. And when one guy gets in, it feels like, okay, it honestly feels like somebody just didn't want to be the first one. So then you see a bunch of guys kind of follow in after that. I think that this could be a really explosive spring for K-State. They're really close on a handful of guys right now that to the point where I had probably like six options on the latest commit watch that I, because we didn't know uh, when we had written, when I had written commit watch who the commit was. So I had like five or six different options where I was like, okay, I could see this being this player, this player, this player. So they're really close. And I, I think that they could potentially get three or four guys in the spring. Thinking about who some of those guys could be, and we'll get into like, cause visits are going to start firing up again uh, as we get, get closer to, you know, spring ball going on and everything else. And then we get into official visit season, which will, will be a big deal. But who, who are some of the guys that people should be keeping in the, the back of their head that when, you know, Taylor Bratt pops off the, the the tweet the cat signal that oh it could be this guy uh the the first guy that comes to my mind and is somebody that uh source and i have talked about potentially being the next commit is uh texas linebacker weston polk uh he visited right before the february dead period began and already has a visit scheduled for the spring to k-state and the vibes that I've gotten around him is that he really likes K-State and really wants to visit again. And visiting again that soon has kind of opened up my eyes of, okay, he could definitely be the next commit. Uh, if you want to know where his, when his visit is scheduled, it's uh, it's in the, the spring visitors thread on KSO. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good reminder for everybody that uh, if you want to get the, like, down to the minute information and everything that you need, like you want the, the hardcore specifics, head over to kstateonline.com. Drew is going to do the Lord's work and keeping everybody up to date on when guys are going to be visiting. Uh, we don't have to go into you know specifics on everybody that is coming in, but we know that Kansas has a really talented class for 2025. How many of those top guys are you expecting to be on campus during the spring for K-State? I would expect most to be on campus at some point during the spring. I know uh, Lincoln Cure already has a visit scheduled. Uh, Bryson Hayes is working on getting one scheduled. Andrew Babalola has one scheduled uh, sometime in the month of April. And then uh, Jaden Woods is still working out uh, getting a visit. And I'd imagine that uh, Dasan Bram takes a visit to K-State sometime during the spring as well. So K-State's right there with just a loaded class in Kansas in 2025. So we're we're getting to the point where everybody kind of knows all these guys by now. So I'm really interested to see where their recruitment goes because K-State is in the lead or in contention with more, more than a handful. Do you think with these guys that are of, you know, the, the, like national, more nationally known recruits, you know, the four stars of this class that, you know, K-State is going to have to compete with the, the the big dogs in the SEC and Big Ten for some of these guys. But what are the chances that, these, that any of these guys have a recruitment that ends early on 
uh, you know, say midsummer, or are, are we looking at it where like some of this stuff stretches into uh, past July and into the season? Like how early could some of these wrap up to where K State either knows their fate with some of these big targets or they're getting really good news early on in the process? My guess is that most of them will be committed by the end of the summer. I know that Lincoln Cure has kind of talked about he wants to be done by the start of his football season. Andrew Babalola has kind of said the same thing. Uh, Desan Bram has talked about potentially committing after the spring, but it will probably be more of a summer guy from the latest update that I've gotten on him. So I think that we're going to see a lot of fireworks come off either spring or summer with a lot of these Kansas kids. And honestly, with how recruiting is going now, it's a little bit more surprising to see a recruitment drag out into the, or into, uh, the football season than them just wrapping it up early. We, we know the quarterback has been landed. That's always a position of need. Got to get at least one of those. And there's a lot of talk about the 2024 class, hey, going to be smaller than normal because of the way the roster is constructed, but they have to replace a 1,000 offensive linemen, basically, so it was an O-line heavy class. Where are some of the needs in this recruiting class, or have those even become clear and developed yet? I'm not sure if they've been clear and developed yet. I, I know that you'll probably see, after not taking a tight end, you might see K-State take two tight ends in this class if they can make it work. Especially considering, you know, yeah. who the top two tight ends would be on their board. Yes, especially when you consider who the top two tight ends are going to be. It'll be a little bit lighter on offensive linemen, I would imagine, but you're you're still going to see K-State probably take three, maybe even four. Uh, after not taking a defensive tackle uh, from the high school ranks last year, you're going to see K-State take at least one. I would imagine that two defensive ends are added after not taking a high school defensive end. And then uh, it just seems like that those are probably the positions of the most need. Uh, I know that receiver is going to be something that gets brought up because of next year potentially uh, could be the last season that Avery Johnson is the starting quarterback at K-State before he goes to the NFL. But I think that with receiver, you're going to see probably two guys get added. But the more impactful ones, I think, would be either who is already on campus or bringing in another transfer uh, receiver next year. Is is receiver going to be one of those positions that gets squeezed out a little bit more in recruiting because of the transfer portal where, you know, the, the athleticism and, and talent and makeup of these guys, it seems like receiver, that's probably the, the highest collection of guys that go into the portal where you think we can find ourselves one of these is that something that, that's going to happen or we're starting to see where high school receivers are kind of getting pushed to the side a little bit more? Uh, I think that it'll be like a healthy mix because you also have to think, too, that even with receiver being so common in the transfer portal, it's also one of the most expensive in the transfer portal in terms of NIL. So I think that you'll see a little bit of both. I, I always think that now nowadays with recruiting and where it's going with with football especially you have to have a healthy mix of i would like to see like one or two high school players at a position and then add a transfer like if you think that you really need it so i think it'll be a little bit of a mix all right what 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 are we forgetting to mention here any any other big notable news that uh needs to be thrown out there right now uh about k state and where things sit recruiting wise is again uh, M March and April are going to become really significant months, especially like we've already talked about the the massive amount of guys that are high end talent who K State would badly like to get on their roster. Uh, I just say that the one thing that we haven't really touched on yet is that Dylan Duff seems like he's going to be a very active recruiter and will be pretty active. I mean, it, it helps too having your quarterback be the first one on board because he can be like, "Hey, join me!" Like it. I'm going to be the one giving you the ball or I'm going to be the one that's that you're blocking for. And he knows a lot of these guys already because he's from the area. I mean, St. Louis isn't that far away. So he knows a good chunk of the case uh, targets right now. And I, I believe it was a uh, Lucas Algeyer, uh, an offensive lineman also from the St. Louis area that as soon as uh, Duff committed, like 
I think he tweeted something like let's go or something and Duff and I believe it was uh, Duff's dad were r- right in the replies trying to get uh, Al Geyer on board. So they were like, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go to K-State together. Not just, you know, let's go. Yeah. So you're, you're going to see, I think Dylan Duff would be a very active recruiter. I would not be shocked if with a lot of these big targets, if Duff makes an effort to be at K-State at the same time. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if you end up seeing Lincoln Cure and Dylan Duff on the same unofficial visit date. Uh, real quick for everybody, go go over some of the, the unofficial versus official visit rules that kind of distinguish from each other and what makes each type of visit important, especially since, because these are going to be unofficials that take place during spring ball, then the officials will fire up in the summertime. So unofficial is all paid for by the the recruit or the recruits family like you have to pay your own way to get to manhattan or wherever else you're going uh so that's really the the main distinguisher and i believe now uh you're not allowed to do a photo shoot on an unofficial visit i I believe that was something that was just passed but now you can't but you still can on an official visit uh an official visit's all paid for by the school and it used to be you could only take five, but now it's an unlimited amount of number. But I, I don't think that you'll see anybody unless they're like really like, I don't want to say crazy, but it, it would be insane. I think if you were a prospect, you took like 15 official visits. <laughs> like you just don't have that time. I just really know. like cool stuff and being treated like a king. Like, I, I don't think that you would see somebody do that uh, especially because I think that other schools would just get sick of that. If somebody was like, Hey, I want to take like 15 official visits. I think that after like five, the next school would probably be like, yeah, no, we're not wasting our time. Uh, the other real distinguishing thing is that official visits, you could be at the school for up to 48 hours on an unofficial visit. You cannot, there's a, a limited amount of time that you can be on campus. Uh, all of these spring visits though, will line up with dates where K state is practicing. So that, that's the main thing that you're going to see. You're going to see K-State practice. You're going to talk to the coaches again. Some of these players that are coming on, on official visits haven't been in Manhattan before, so they're meeting the coaches then. But the official visit is like you have 48 hours and every like all of your schedule is like lined up for you on what you're doing. Where, when are you eating? Where are you eating? Uh, somebody on the team hosts you at their apartment or house. It's like the, the official visit is very in depth. The unofficial visit isn't mu- as in depth, but especially with this one, you will at least get to see K state practice. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, this is, this was fascinating this morning. Uh, it was, it was put out by a couple of people, but the, the tweet I'm, I'm reading was from Andrew Ivins. Uh, the NCAA sent out an email this, this morning, we're recording this on Thursday, but, that photo shoots are not the only thing that are gone from visits. The NCAA blasted out an email this morning saying schools can no longer decorate prospects, hotel rooms on officials, all cookies and snacks must be handed to recruits in the lobby. So just the, uh, another thing being removed from this process. The the thing to me that's funny is the, the cookies have to be in the lobby thing. Like, could you imagine like you get like some like NCAA, like, investigation on you and it's because you handed them the cookie not in the lobby uh lincoln cure was given his cookie outside of his hotel room uh yeah. not in the lobby but just he, he opened the door and there there they were but yeah, I, I will say too that the ncaa will get a lot of flack for that but i think that that's also something that you're seeing that a lot of schools just didn't want to do because yes i mean to, to be completely honest that's kind of a pain in the ass to do upwards of like 50 60 times a year so i could see where a lot of schools are probably like we don't want to do this so can you make it a rule that nobody can yeah i i think i think that yeah this is one of those things people are going to laugh at and go okay what, what are we doing here the, the schools are actually probably down for this they this this is a lot of work and a lot of stuff that in the grand scheme of things should not matter when choosing uh, a school, a school and everything and these the football coach are probably like many christmas like if you want cookies like i'll throw an oven in my office and just have them popping out I, you don't need to get them at your hotel room uh, it, it, so. it's kind of the same thing with the the photo shoot on unofficial visits some staffs just 
aren't big enough to do that, and especially on game days, to get everybody in the uniform. So I, I could see that easily, too, being something I've like. You know what? You want a cookie on your visit? Go visit somewhere that has a double tree and just stay there. There, cookies on your visit. It's the only way you're getting them now. So I was going to say go to Crumble Cookies, but, you know. Oh, uh, see, uh, I'm... I'm not, I'm not as big of a crumble guy as some. My wife, big on crumble. I'm like, I don't know that these taste really that great. Uh, so it, I, it was, the, it was the first cookie place that I could think of. So that, give that, me a generic cookie. Like I, I probably am more along the insomnia route because those are more, those are more insomnia like you know, classic style. That's something about crumble. It's just, it's, it's too much for me. So yeah, crumble was just the first one I thought of to be, to be honest. So okay. insomnia is good. Crumble good. I know that that's not, you're not going to get like a cookie hot take out of me on that. Well, actually, Drew, I think the best cookies out there are the ones my mom makes. So that's <laughs> that's the right answer. You could have said that, uh, but I'll just uh, say that. So, although I do, I don't know. That's, that's that's tough. Once you get married and you start to have to differentiate between do you like your wife or your mom's cooking better? Uh, <laughs> do you want to tell the truth or do you do, you know not want to get beaten? By either side. So by either side. Yeah, you kind of just have to to lie. So all right. Well, that will do it for us. Good updates from Drew there. And if you want the full scope of what's going on with K-State football recruiting, head over to kstateonline.com and you can you can find a couple of notes and uh, pieces of news on it. But if you want the full inside info, become a member of K-State Online if you're not, and uh, you'll get to see the the exact dates that these guys are visiting, updates immediately after from all of the players and everything else that you need to be in the know on K-State football. So that will do it for Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online.